Glory to Jesus. Praise you, Lord, for your presence. The Prince of God is here. The Prince of Almighty God is with us. Oh, it's great joy to preach Christ Jesus, who is risen from the dead. This is another page called Intimacy with God. A Facebook page. And I thank you. Hemant, he is my son. Anand Hemant, he is my son. He started a new page, Intimacy of God. I invite all the, fa the friends, the families to this page to enjoy the word of God, enjoy the presence of God. Glory to Jesus. Oh, praise God. The presence of God is so much here. Oh, glory. So I encourage my son in this page of intimacy with God so that the body of Christ be edified. Our motive, our purpose is to take the people of God to close to God. Not close to the church, not close to the pastor, not close to the prophets, not close to the evangelists, but close to God. That's why the page name is called Intimacy with God. Intimacy with God settles everything in our lives. When you're getting the problems, don't have intimacy with the problems. When you get the sickness, don't have intimacy with sickness. In the middle of the sickness, in the middle of the problems, when we have intimacy with Almighty God, that settles everything in our lives. That's why Sami says, every time you can see, when you read the word of God, when you read the word of God from the Bible, you can see the presence of God. Something will happen inside your heart when we read this word of God. Because the presence of God touches whenever you read the word of God. When you read the newspaper, nothing will happen to us. When you read the newspaper, moreover, get the fear unbelief all the negative things will come to your heart but when you read the word of god you will get intimacy with god intimacy with god is important dear, dear uh, child of god intimacy with god is so important in our lives glory to god that's why let's go to the word of god Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to 105 Psalm. Psalms 105. From 1st verse to 5th verse, let's go. Let's go and read it. 105 Psalm. 105 Psalm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. 105 Psalm. 1st verse to 4th verse. These four verses says, how to have intimacy with God. How to seek the presence of God. Shall we start? First verse onwards. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wonderful, wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face forevermore. Glory to God. Fourth verse says, seek the Lord. Nine, one not five song. Fourth verse says, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. Seek his face evermore. Seek his face means seek his presence. 
His presence, his face means his presence. The bodily form. The person of Jesus seeking him every time. Seek his face. It means seek his presence. The presence of God is so important. Seek. In, in this world, we seek many things. Some people seek the gold. Some people seek the money. Some people seek the fame and name. Some people seek the position, the power. Many things. They, they seek the material things. But we are the people of God. We are not behind the material things. We are not behind the position. We are not behind the titles. We are not behind the gold and silver or money. We are behind the presence of God. We keep on seek the presence of God. The presence of God is so important. Every believer, a child of God, needs the presence of God that will be inside of the heart. You must seek the presence of God. This is very, very important. See, the seek the presence of God is so important in our lives. It is important than your parents, important than your friends, important than anything in this world. The presence of God so important. Glory to God. That's why Swami says, seek His presence forevermore. Seek His presence all the time. How to seek the presence of God? When you come to first verse, 105, Psalm first verse, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon His name. Number one, if you want to seek the presence of God, there is no other name except the name of Jesus. Call upon His name. You must take the name of Jesus and call upon His name. He is our Father. He is everything. Number one, call upon His name. When you call upon His name, He is the Lord who created the years. He can hear our prayers. He will attend to our call the moment you call upon the Lord. Our God is not a rock which cannot hear. Our God is not a stone. Our God is not a tree. Our God is not an animal. God is the God, Almighty God, who created, entered this universe. We have to seek His face. Glory to God. Call upon the name of Jesus. Number one. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Make known His deeds. What are the deeds He did? In your life, in somebody's life on in the life of God's people in the Bible from Adam to last person in this earth he will do all the things and you can see many many miracles many many things that God did but I want to tell you don't seek the miracles but seek the person who can perform the miracles. This is important. That's why make his deeds known to everyone. Proclaim pro and declare the deeds that God has done. The moment you make known to the deeds of the Lord, when you, when you declare the deeds of the Lord, what are the deeds, good things God did in our lives, the mighty things he did in our lives. When you proclaim, when you declare it, you are seeking the presence of God. You are seeking the face of God. Declare among the peoples what he did. Don't keep, uh, shut your mouth. And don't keep all the things what God has done inside of your heart. Let all the things come out and proclaim all the people. Hear what the mighty God did in our lives. When you do this, you are seeking the face of God. You are seeking the presence of God. Glory to God. Call upon the name of God. Number two, make known, declare his deeds among the people. Number three, sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works. Sing to him, sing about him. Don't sing about the sickness. Don't sing the songs about the sickness. Don't sing songs about the problems. 
Don't sing the songs about the sin and bondages. Sing the songs of God. Sing songs of the deliverance. Glory to God. What are the songs you are singing that impacts your faith? The songs you are singing only to sing praises to Him and glorify Him. Nothing else. Glory to God. Nothing else. Sing to Him. What are the songs you are singing? Some people, they sing cinema songs. They sing the songs of praises. The Bible says, In, 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 a, in a well of what in a well only sweet water may come or the bitter water may come the both will not come the bitter or sweet water cannot come out of a well but in the mouth of yours one side you are singing the praises to the Lord other side you are singing the cinema songs movie songs which cannot give glory to God See, sing to the Lord, sing praises to Him every time. When you sing praises to the Lord, you are seeking the praise of God. And talk of all His wondrous works. Talk, what are you talking every day? You are talking about the COVID-19. You are talking about the vaccine. You are talking about triple uh, six. Nowadays, people are talking about the Antichrist. The Bible says, speak about the Jesus Christ, but you are talking about the Antichrist. Bible never said speak about the Antichrist. Proclaim the Antichrist. Antichrist is not at all gospel. Jesus Christ is the gospel. You may say we are preparing the people to avoid the Antichrist. Bible never said like this. When you speak Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will look after everything. Not the Antichrist will save the people. So he what are you talking about every day? Talking about the sickness, troubles, problems. You are talking very less about God. You are, you are talking very less about the works of God. <clears throat> but here, talk of all His wondrous works. Every time with whom you are meeting, speak the wondrous works of God. Every day you meet different kinds of people. What are you talking this is important. See, when you talk of all his wondrous works, you are seeking the face of God. You are seeking the presence of God. Number three, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who rejoice who seek the Lord. When you seek the Lord, seek his presence, seek the presence of God, you will rejoice inside the heart. The inside of the heart, you will rejoice that brings health to your body. That brings deliverance inside of your spirit. You will enjoy the freedom that God has given to you inside of your spirit. You may be surrounded with many problems, maybe sicknesses, many troubles. But when you seek the Prince of God inside of the heart, you keep on rejoice. Oh, what a Prince of God that brings joy inside of the heart. Glory to God. Fourth verse says, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face. When you do these things, you are seeking the presence of God. Mm, glory to God. People may mock at you when you sing praises to God. People may talk bad against you when you seek the presence of God. People may talk, this fellow don't have the knowledge, wisdom. Always says God and his presence. Always singing the praises. Always worship the Lord. That is the only thing we needed. Neglect what the people are talking about you. When you are having intimacy with God. By singing praises to God. Worship Him. That is the life. Dear brother, that is the real life. Glory to God. You and God. There should be no one is there between you and God. No problem, no sickness, no demon can come between you and God. Keep on worship Him. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
seek his presence. I want to tell you, when you seek the presence of God, what will happen? What will happen? Now I want to tell you, now the generation, they are seeking the guidance. They need the guidance for their lives. Those are studying, they need the guidance. Those are completed their studies, they need the guidance. Which further course they have to go? Or which is the job they have to do? Or shall they come to full-time ministry? They, they need the guidance for all these things. After completion of your education, you may be in confusion. Or you may be getting ready to be married. See, you may be thinking, whom shall I marry? Who is my spouse? You may be thinking all these things. For all these things, don't go behind a prophet. I want to tell you, your life, God will speak with you, not with someone. First he will speak. God will speak with someone. God will speak through the prophets. First of all, he will speak instead of you. When you have intimacy with God, when you don't have intimacy with God, you keep on go behind the prophets, pastors, evangelists. Or some people, Christians, they are going behind the palmistry, those who read the palm. They will say the uh, soothsayers, they are going to soothsayers, who says about your future? Very dangerous this is. When you seek the presence of God, what happens, let us see. Shall we come? Come back to Joshua, the book of Joshua. I like this book, but I want to come to third chapter. I want to just give you outlines only. I'm not going deep into the message, but I, I want to give you outlines so that you can make it more and more and get the things from the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Glory to the name of Jesus. I said glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you for your presence. The Prince of God is here right now. I want to tell you, dear brother and sister, who is watching this, who is hearing this message, you may be in confusion in your life. You may be in the cross, at the crossroads and waiting which way shall I go. You may be thinking which way I have to go. Now this is the time where you are standing at the crossroads. From there you have to seek the face of God. Seek the presence of God. This is very, very important right now. Let us see. When Moses died, when Moses died, the, all, all the people of God, they, they went into discouragement. Listen carefully. Including Caleb, Caleb and Joshua, all the people, they went to discouragement. They were unable to do anything. The Lord interfered. Lord was speaking to Joshua. If you read first chapter, God said, Joshua, son of Nun, my servant Moses is dead. Why is he talking like this? Already Joshua knew very well. Because of Moses died, they went to discouragement. Then why God is talking as if Joshua did not know it? God was talking to Joshua. My servant Moses died. It means Moses died. Servants will die. But I will never die. I am the living God. Those are reading you, they may die before you could die. But I am the Lord who lives forever and ever. That's why you have to seek His presence, the person, the God who lives forever and ever. Don't seek the guidance from the man who dies. And, he, and also, you don't know when he dies and he doesn't know when he dies. See here, Moses died. God said, Moses is dead. Stop thinking about the dead people. How long will you think about the dead people? Think about the living God. Seek the living God. I am the Lord. Moses died, but my power is not dead. Moses is dead, but my spirit is not dead. Moses is dead. My miracles are not dead. I am not dead God. Just seek me. God is saying to Joshua and God said you get up from your discouragement get up and take all my people and face the Jordan River 
they are getting fear if they want to go to the blessed nation the blessed place the place which flow the honey and the milk glory to god the jordan was river big problem for them to cross over it and there was no moses to do the miracles to make the river two parts they were disgraced completely the discouragement comes when you feel something the good is going to happen in my life but you will never see it you will think the good is going to happen to my life but everything you are seeing against it you have a great desire in your heart that god is going to do mighty things in my life but before your eyes you are seeing against your desire when you follow the things which are seen with your eyes surely you will be disgraced but you must follow and seek the god who gave the promise who gave the prophecy who gave the vision so that's why god is saying to joshua you are getting fear to face the jordan river but i am with you as i was with moses go ahead and stand before the jordan river so every time i want to tell you it's a challenge many challenges in our lives but go don't run away from the challenges go and face the challenge stand before the challenge stand before the problem stand before the things which you are getting fear stand that's the god is saying to joshua you are getting fear to look at the jordan river but go and stand against it and god said tell to your priest to carry the ark of covenant let us see from the bible third chapter third chapter first verse book of joshua third chapter first verse then joshua rose early in the morning he got up early morning to do the god's work he had so many things to do but what about you and me early morning we cannot do anything but we can do one thing having intimacy with god early morning you can get up having intimacy with god by singing praises to him by remembering all the wondrous works of god and giving thing, thanks to him oh praises to him that is the way we have to seek the presence of god got up early morning then he was telling to the people let us see if you read second verse so it was after 3 days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying when you see the ark of covenant of the lord your god and the priests of the levites bearing it then you shall set out from your place and go after it glory to god the god is saying to people of god when priests carrying the ark of covenant you have to follow the ark of covenant what is this ark of covenant this ark of covenant in the old testament the presence of god rests rested upon the ark of covenant when priests carry the ark of covenant the presence of god was there so that the people can follow the ark of covenant which is the presence of god in the new testament the ark of covenant is jesus christ the ark of covenant is jesus christ you and i carrying the ark of covenant instead of you instead of you glory to god the priest carries the ark of covenant in the old testament then who are the priest in the new testament let's come to first peter first peter first chapter first peter first chapter thank you jesus thank you jesus the first peter the bible says here the first epistle of first peter right 
and first chapter. Glory to Jesus. Sorry, second chapter. Second chapter, ninth verse. First Peter, second chapter, ninth verse. Let us see. Here, God is a but you are a chosen generation. Let us start from eighth verse onwards. A stone of tumbling and a rock of offense, the stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation. Number one, you are a chosen generation. Don't look down yourself. What God has given titles, take it. Don't take your own titles. Your own titles will never work. But title that God has given to us always works. Here Jesus said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a royal priesthood, holy nation, and special people. The four titles God has given to us. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, royal priesthood. Those are washed by the blood of Jesus. Everyone is a priest. Listen carefully, dear brother and sister. I want to encourage you, dear brother. You are a priest. You can carry the presence of God without anybody's... There should be no mediator. There, is, there should be no mediator to carry the presence of God. You, yourself, the priest unto God. The one who is washed... We are washed by the blood of Jesus. And the one who washed us is the great king. He is the king of kings. He made us kings. He made us priests. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. So we are priests. Who are the priests? You are a priest. I am a priest. Don't think only special people. Those are called for the full-time ministry. Those are priests. Only pastors are priests. Only evangelists are priests. Only the prophets are priests. Bible did not say this, dear brothers and sisters. Please listen to this. Once you are washed by the blood of Jesus, you are a priest. You are eligible to carry the Ark of Covenant. That is presence of God. You are a priest. You can seek the presence of God. Glory to God. See, in the Old Testament, the priests, they're carrying the Ark of Covenant, means they're carrying the presence of God. Only priests should do it in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, everyone who washed by the blood of Jesus are the priests. Here, Joshua is saying, when you see the priest carrying the Ark of Covenant, you must follow it. As given a distance, should not touch it. The presence of God that is. Okay, I want to go deep. I don't want to give, go deep in this. Here, what you are saying, you must follow the Ark of Covenant. Means you must follow the presence of God. You must carry the presence of God. Then you will follow the presence of God. Then what happens? He is saying, Fourth verse, yet there shall be a space between you and the Ark of Covenant, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near to the Ark of Covenant, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. When you follow the Ark of Covenant, the Ark of Covenant shows the guidance, number one. It means the presence of God gives the guidance. The blueprint will not come from anyone. God will never give the blueprint. The more you seek the presence of God, the presence of God leads you, guides you which way you have to go, which job you have to do, which spouse you have to marry, which, stu which study you have to study. Everything you may be in confusion. Don't be confused. Just relax. And seek his presence. Every day keep on praise his name. This is very very important. The presence of God shows the way. Because these people never went the way. Now they, they, they are going. This is the thing Joshua is saying. You may know the way by which you must go. The way you must go means the way God desired. 
the way God designed for your life. Your way is not, des not designed by prophet, not designed by pastor, not designed by preacher. Your way is designed by God and designed by God. Your destiny is designed by God. Why are I unable to know the way? Why are I unable to know what God has designed for my life? What God has designed in my life? I am unable to know it. You may say that. Why? Because you are not seeking the presence of God. Seek His presence, that's all. His presence gives you guidance. When you seek the presence of God, when you seek the face, number one, you will get the guidance. Glory to God. Here, Joshua was saying, you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. You did not go this way before in your life. This is the new way for you. You did not know how to go. You doesn't know how to go. You may be in confusion. You may be at the crossroads. Which way you have to go? Don't be confused. Seek the presence of God. When you keep on continuing to seek the presence of God, you will not be on the crossroads. Many people after coming on the crossroads, they begin to seek the presence of God. But when you, before you could come to the crossroads, just keep on seeking continuing His presence, His face. By singing praises to Him. By worshipping the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. The presence of God shows the way. Presence of God gives you guidance. That is number one. Number two. Let's come to sixth verse. Then Joshua spoke to the priest saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And seventh verse, And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israelites. Yet God is saying here, I will exalt you before all the people because you are also following the Ark of Covenant. You are also behind the Ark of Covenant. I will exalt you. When you seek the presence of God, there will be promotion in your life. There will be exaltation, not from the people, from God. People may suppress you. People may look down you. People may doesn't like you to go up. But God is exalting you. God giving you promotion. No one can stop it. Glory to God. Amen. Your brother, God intended a promotion in your life. God intended exaltation in your life, in your family, in your church. Seek his presence. Carry the Ark of Covenant. Carry the presence of God every time. Seek His face every time. The exaltation began to come from the presence of God. All the people may try to stop you, but they will not win against God. Who is greater than God? Who is powerful than God? Show me. One name tell me but this person is the more powerful than God. Nowhere in the universe. Only the name of Jesus. That's why when you seek the presence of God, you will be exalted. God will exalt you. That's why God is saying to Joshua, I will exalt you before all these people. How I did the miracles through Moses. In the same way, I will do the miracles through you and exalt you before the people. God will exalt you. Don't exalt yourself. Don't exalt yourself by taking the position in the churches. Don't try to get the position in the church. Don't try to get the position in the body of Christ. Already, 
God has designed exaltation in your life. Just seek His presence. Seek His presence. Glory to God. So, number two, exaltation. When you seek the face of God, when you seek the presence of God, number two, the thing will happen in your life is exaltation. Number one, guidance. Number two, exaltation. And number three, what is going to happen? Let us see. Ninth verse. Ninth verse. Um, ninth, let us see ninth and tenth verses. So, Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua did not say, hear my words. He said, hear the words of the Lord. And Joshua said, by this you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, and Gergashites, Amorites, Jebusites, right? Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Gergashites, Amorites, Jerushites. Total seven enemies were there. These are enemies for God's people. Then God is saying here, by this you shall know that the living God among you and that he will he will without fail drive out your enemies, drive out the demons, drive out the devil. The demons which are against you will be driven out because of this presence of God. Not, not because of your strength, not because of our knowledge and wisdom, not because of prayer life. It is not that because of God himself, he will drive out the demons, he will drive out the enemies who are coming against your exaltation, against your promotion, against your guidance. These enemies are there. Knights, shites, dites, everything is there here. All these knights will go away. All these shites will go away. All these rights will go away. All sites will go away. No sight, no right, no shite, no knight will be In a position stand against us because God will drive them out. Number three, when you seek the presence of God, you will drive out the demons. That's why Jesus said, in my name, you will drive out the demons. And Jesus said, if I drive out the demons by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Many demons are coming against your life. What God has designed what God has desired, what God want, intended to do something good in your life, devil doesn't like to accomplish in your life. That's why it's coming against you. Now what you have to do, you have to drive them out in the presence of God. When you seek the presence of God, the presence of God will drive out the enemies. That is number three. When you keep on seek the presence, the enemies will be driven out. How powerful the enemy may be, you are thinking. But before the presence of God, it will become not. It will become nothing. Glory to God. Who can stand against the presence of God? That's why we have to seek the presence of God every time. Seek the presence of God. The face of God. It means the presence of God. That's the psalmist says, in 105 Psalm 4th verse, seek his face forevermore. Seek his presence every time. Forever and ever, the presence of God is your strength and my strength. Glory to God. Number three, the demons will go away, which are coming against the will of God. When you seek the presence. Number one, when you seek the presence of God, you will get guidance in your life. Number two, you will be exalted by the hand of the Lord. Number three, you will drive out the demons in the presence of God. He will drive out the demons. Number four, let us see from the Bible. 
13th verse. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. The, the Lord shall rest in the waters of the Jordan that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off. The waters that comes down from upstream and they shall stand as a heap. Before it could happen, the Lord was speaking through Joshua. What, what is going to happen to this river? Jordan River, that was the rainy spring season, completely filled. The dam was filled. The water was overflowing. The river was in dangerous situation. The Bible says, 14th verse, So it was, when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan River, they, were, they set out to cross over the Jordan, they did not run away. Look at the problem. They want to walk upon the problem for which they got feared before they could carry the Ark of Covenant. The, the moment the priest carrying the Ark of Covenant, there was no fear in their hearts. They set out to cross over the river. Set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan River with the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as those who bore the Ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priest who bore the Ark dipped in the edge of the water, For the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest, that the waters which came down from upstream stood still. The water com coming from upstream, there only stop. The, from upstream, the, from there up, upwards, the water falls in the river, in the Jordan River. The flow was very violent. But when the, the Bible says that the waters which came down from upstream stood still. Glory to God. Upstream stood still. It became like a rock. They stopped to flow. Glory to God. Then what happens? And rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zarethan. So the waters that went down into the sea of the Araba, the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people crossed over opposite Jericho. What a miracle! The moment the priest carrying the praise of God, they did not wait at the banks of the river till they see the miracle. They enter into the water. They were entered, they entered into the water. They see the faith of the priest. The Ark of Covenant gives faith to you. The presence of God increases your faith. The presence of God gives you the gift of faith. The presence of God pushes your faith. In the middle of the trouble, the problem, you are thinking, I cannot cross over this problem. You may be thinking, I cannot cross over this trouble. But in the presence of God, you can cross over every problem. The presence of God, God is your boldness. The presence of God is your courage. My courage is the presence of God. See here, but the moment the priest, the feet touch of the water, the prince of God began to do the miracle. The upstreams stopped there. And the water which is in the river, they went away. And there was a dry land. People began to walk upon the water. The prince of God did this. When you seek the prince of God, the fourth thing is going to happen, miracle. Miracles happens. Miracles are creative miracles. The 
outstanding miracles you can see it when you seek the face of god when you seek the presence of god no one knows when you are seeking the presence of god you are all alone in your room and singing prayers to god giving thanks to god every time by loving him worshiping him and you are seeking the presence of god that presence of god will do wonders in your life that's a psalmist one of them says seek his face forever more when you seek the presence of god number one you will be guided guidance there will be no confusion in your life in your studies in your job in your marriage no confusion guidance pakka guidance 100% guidance from the holy spirit 100% guidance from the presence of god glory to god 100% guidance will be granted to you when you keep on seek the presence of god continually consistently in the spirit number 1 you will get guidance number 2 you will be exalted number 3 the enemies will be driven out number 4 creative miracles outstanding miracles will happen through the presence of god shall we decide in the presence of god to seek the presence of god if you did not seek in all these years the presence of god decide right now father i seek your presence i need your presence in my life without your presence i cannot get guidance without your presence i will not be exalted without your presence i cannot drive out the demons without your presence i cannot see the miracles glory to god let us seek the presence of god let us seek the presence of god decide in the heart dear brother dear sister the church of god don't look at the troubles don't look at the problems don't look at the situations are happening in the, all over the world don't keep on meditating about the attribute six or antichrist forget about all these things seek the presence of god let us all together personally seek the presence of god let's pray father god we thank you that you washed us with your precious blood so that we can enter into your presence boldly we have access to seek your presence through your precious blood lord jesus we thank you you died and risen from the dead and now you prepared the way in our hearts to enter into the presence of god to seek the presence of god father we are seek the your presence we are deciding to seek your presence every day every moment forever and ever we seek your face forever more we thank you lord through your presence you are going to do mighty things in my in my life in our lives in the lives those are hearing and watching we thank you praise you lord let all your people see your presence be filled with your presence led by your presence every work of the devil to see the presence of god we bring it in jesus name we thank you lord praise you give you glory in jesus name we pray who is the son of god who is to come amen 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 praise god dear brothers and sisters we are really blessed with the presence of god keep on seek his presence i thank you once again uh intimacy with god page bob you are my son do you are my son i give you thanks he gave me opportunity to preach about the presence of god god bless you and let this intimacy of god who goes to every corner of the world to prepare the hearts of the people to have the intimacy with god amen god bless you